Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're actually looking at a very unusual star that seems to change its brightness and uh, change its color even. This is a variable star known as Algol and it has a few mysteries that baffled scientists for many many years until we finally solved them a few hundred years ago. Today we're going to talk about this unusual star and we're going to discuss what's going on in there and what the mysteries are. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And the star you're looking at is known as Algo and also known as Beta Per Se. This is actually um, a star system and you may have guessed why it's uh, blinking. It's because it's actually a binary star. There's two stars that are eclipsing each other and they're creating these beautiful, unusual patterns. Uh, now, unlike other stars we've discussed previously, now, if you think that this is the binary star, why is this star uh, blinking still? Well, that's because this is actually a triple star system. That's right, there's actually three stars, and yes, I kind of tricked you. We're going to go and zoom in to the blinking star, which is uh, the main sort of part of this system. And we're going to take a look at it in a little bit more detail. And you can kind of see them orbiting around one another right now. So as they orbit one another, one of the stars essentially crosses the path of the other star and i'm going to try to simulate this there you go and this is what causes the dimming now uh for something like several thousand years we've actually known about this as a matter of fact the ancient egyptians were the first to realize that this was a star that was blinking it was changing um its brightness but they obviously didn't have an explanation for it and the first explanation uh came to us um only in uh, late 1800s by a person by the name of Edward Pickering, who actually um, realized that this was probably an eclipsing binary, as these are called. It's basically two stars where one star comes in front of the other star. But because it's a blinking star and because um, back in the days astronomers always associate changes with something bad, uh, this unlucky star is actually known as Algol. And Algol stems from the word Ras al Ghul, which in Arabic means head of the ogre, or I guess uh, it's very similar to the word ghoul that we have today. So basically, it was a kind of a creature associated with death and uh, unfortune. Um, in English, it also has a name uh, Demon Star, because why not? And in Hebrew, it's known as Satan's Head, or Rosh HaSatan. And so basically, this is a very unlucky star. As a matter of fact, um, people that used to do astronomy-based magic always associated this star with a lot of darkness and dark magic. So there is that as well. But interestingly, this is actually a pretty cool star. And we're going to actually talk about the other mystery in a second. So these two stars right here are actually quite interesting. Both of them are all together. They form a mass of about 5.8 masses of sun. Uh, they also orbit around one another um, every 2.6 days. So this is about 2.6 days orbit. And um, essentially the star changes its um, luminosity this often. Uh, they also produce quite a lot of x-rays because there's a lot of interaction going on between them and because their magnetic fields are really, really strong even compared to our own sun. And the star that you see right there is known as uh, Beta Per Se uh, C, or basically Algo C, um, is a little bit farther away, so it doesn't actually interact with them as as well, but it does cause a little bit more um, changes in luminosity if observed with a telescope. Now, because the star is associated with a lot of demonic stuff, um, a lot of its names are also very demonic. As, as a matter of fact, it's uh, very commonly known as Gorgona, or uh, basically uh, Gorgon, which is sort of like a, a Greek a creature that is kind of scary looking uh, and uh, it's interesting uh, that this star has always actually been um, in every single mythology in every single culture uh, the Chinese have a name for it the um, Middle Eastern people and obviously the ancient astronomers um, in South America also had a name for it as well so for many, many, many years, people were fascinated with this unusual blinking star. Uh, but what's really interesting is that um, about um, seven or so million years ago, it was actually much closer to our sun. Uh, it was about 9.8 light years away. So it may have actually influenced the orbits of many comets in our own solar system and may have even caused some kind of a miniature uh, collision with our planet and possibly even some kind of a miniature 
extinction event that may have um, occurred seven to eight million years ago but so far there's no evidence for it but we do know that it definitely passed very close to us and it's currently approximately uh, just over 90 light years away from us actually let's be a little bit more precise and point at earth and find out that it's exactly 93 light years away from us so that's that's basically how far it is and we're actually going to maybe go toward earth let's fly toward earth and look at this star from a distance as well because it does look kind of cool so here we go we're going to go to earth and as we fly into earth we're going to take a look at this beautiful star now this is not all i wanted to say about the star because it does have another mystery that fascinated astronomers for a very long time because they couldn't figure out what exactly happened uh, during the creation of the uh, system here so this is a triple system which is not uncommon but the binary system in there has two stars that are um, different age, they're different mass. And what's interesting is that um, they shouldn't really be the way they are right now. And I'm going to explain it to you using Universe Sandbox, just so that it makes more sense visually. But uh, for now though, let's actually fly out of here. We're going to keep looking at the beautiful Algol as we're headed back to Earth. And so this is a very bright star. It's actually quite easy to see with naked eye. It's quite easy to see um, with binoculars. And to see its variability, you would have to probably take a, um, a telescope and point a camera or something at it and uh, take pictures for about six days or so, so that you can actually see it blink twice. But that's essentially it. And let's see if we can make it blink a little bit by accelerating time. I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but it might. So it does not unfortunately blink um, in the game if you're far away from it, but it does blink if you come closer. Anyway, so let's go into Universe Sandbox and talk about the other mystery of Algol. And so here we are in Universe Sandbox and we're in a simulation known as Near and Bright Stars. We're going to zoom out of our sun and look for the bright star Algol that's about 92-ish light years away from us somewhere out there now i might miss it when i start zooming out but i'm going to try to locate it just to show you how far away it is from us and so let's actually find a distance of about 92 light years away so that's about this far and we're going to look for a star in this region known as algo that's very very bright and quite easy to see now you may already see it but i'm still looking for it i know it's somewhere out here and there it is, finally found it. So that's our goal all by itself because it's the brightest star in this particular region. And there's the Sun and Alpha Centauri next to it. So essentially, uh, this is the star that we're going to be taking a look at. But unfortunately, in Universe Sandbox, there's actually only one our goal, even though it's a triple star system. It only has the bigger version of it. So let's talk about the other mystery of Algol that uh, was actually known as the algal paradox uh, and it was basically related to the theory of stellar evolution i'm going to try to explain it to you by recreating the system from scratch here and so here is the basic uh, algal system so there's algal a much larger star algal b a little bit smaller and um here's what algal paradox refers to so in uh, astronomy usually a much larger much more massive star will live much much less it will actually very likely go supernova or become a white dwarf much sooner than the star that has less mass in other words less massive stars tend to live longer but in case of this particular star system algal a seems to be a little bit younger because it's still in its main sequence stage whereas algal b seems to be much older because it's already become what's known as um subgiant basically a star that's entering its last sort of uh, legs of life of main sequence star and is becoming larger and larger so let's just actually maybe try to simulate this uh, we know that the age here is 300 million years and the age here is something like several billion years but we're going to start increasing the age and see how these stars transform um, as i increase the age here so after a few billion years, let's see what happens. So it gets a little bit larger and then it gets a little bit larger still. And it's going to basically keep growing until it becomes um, a, what's known as a subgiant. Now, why is this star older than this? It shouldn't be happening. And here's what uh, the astronomers discovered when they've learned a few concepts, including the concept I've recently talked about, known as the Roche-Loeb concept. 
So because uh, these stars started orbiting each other a long time ago, they've established a very stable orbit. But uh, in between them, there is uh, this kind of a shape that's formed known as the Roche lobe. If the mass of one star goes outside of this Roche lobe, it starts losing its mass to the other star. And that's essentially what going, we're going to try to create here. So basically, when this becomes relatively large, I wonder if I can actually make it really, really big before making it go uh, explode on me, essentially, go supernova. Although technically this star is probably not going to go supernova, but okay, here we go. Oh, this is beautiful. So now it's very, very large and it's definitely outside of its Roche lobes and it's going to actually possibly start losing some of its mass. I, I'm going to accelerate this just to see if it actually happens, just to see if the game starts simulating the mass loss. There we go. Oh no, not exactly what I was expecting, but that's the idea. So it starts losing the mass and the mass starts transferring into the other star. All right, let's try this again, actually. We're gonna erase the supernova here, even though it's absolutely beautiful. And let me just try to recreate this again. So there's a lot of fragments flying around. These are actually very, very massive too. They're like size of 102 Earths. That is very large. Let's just erase them because otherwise they will make our star go supernova again. So I've placed them in a really stable orbit around one another and I'm going to increase this to about 2.7 billion years and Okay, maybe a little bit more. Let's go Let's go to three. Let's see what happens at three billion years. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. Wow, this is gorgeous. So this is definitely now um, a kind of a subgiant. That's, okay, it's actually going Nova for some reason. And I think it may actually affect my other goal a little bit. But so what's going to start happening here, you can kind of see, see these fragments flying out of the bigger algal into the smaller algal. That's essentially what's causing this star to kind of shrink when we're going to make it a little bit smaller now and this star to grow in size and acquire more mass which implies two things one is that this is essentially how this star was able to live so long so it's literally a demon star it's sucking out the life out of the out of its companion and two is that uh this is why uh we think that the ver variability of the star also changed over time too because as the star absorbs the fragments absorbs the mass from the from its companion um this star starts orbiting even faster around it this star uh, this star will grow larger and larger in mass and the variability will probably increase and become uh, more and more frequent so even though it's oh no that's not what I expected, but okay. Um, even though it's technically 2.6 days now, it might actually decrease to one day and even less. And one day, maybe this is actually what's going to happen. Maybe they will just combine and go uh, supernova. So essentially, this is the algal paradox, and this is a star known as Algo that you just saw before it went supernova. And this is how it uh, works and what's happening there. And this is how Roche lobes, which I've discussed previously, affect binary systems in general. Now, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and consider supporting the channel Patreon as well, because it does help me uh, create better, high co higher quality videos that will definitely be more educational as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.